This question is very obviously about punctuation, so let's just take a look, see how this sentence is constructed, where do things break, what kinds of punctuation do we need to connect these ideas. Um, a conceptual artist and designer embraced by both the art world and the fashion world, Mary Ping was chosen to curate the exhibition Front Row, Chinese American Designers for the Museum of Chinese in America. So uh, one thing I'll just point out is that, that, yeah, there's a colon here and that might make you think like, oh, well, how does that affect what's going on? It doesn't because the colon is part of the title. So just like ignore it, it doesn't matter. Um, but we do have to find where the sentence kind of begins and ends. And um, it begins here. Mary Ping was chosen to curate the exhibition, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of the main sentence. This part that actually starts it is not part of the sentence. It's part, it's an extra clause that we're attaching to it. A conceptual artist and designer embraced by both the art world and the fashion world. This is all just a long description of Mary Ping. So because it's extra, we need to attach it in a way that allows us to attach an extra piece at the beginning. The only thing that's going to work here is the comma. So we definitely can't use no punctuation because this is the entire point of punctuation is if we're attaching extra clauses to our sentences, we use at the very least a comma to kind of show where that break happens. So we need something to show the break. Um, the colon doesn't make sense because in order to use it, we really need to have a complete sentence before the colon. We have some flexibility with what comes after, but we need that complete sentence beforehand and we don't have that. Like I said, it's, it's not a complete sentence to start this thing off. It's just an, an intro clause that's describing ping, but it's not, um, it's not giving any, any verb. There's nothing, or actually there's no subject here. It's not saying um, is subject ever a verb. Uh, and then C has a similar problem. A semicolon in most cases requires a sentence beforehand and a sentence after. We definitely have the sentence after, but like I said, the first part is not a sentence, so that doesn't make sense. So maybe you would have just gotten this anyway because if you were writing the sentence, I think most of you would have put a comma here just kind of instinctively, but now you know why. There are rules that kind of back that up and as much as possible, we want to be able to prove these grammar questions with rules, not just with our instincts about what we would write.